Hello, welcome back to a Toyota Land Cruiser video. It's another 100,000 video of this walk around of this rig. You guys can notice right away, I took off my gnarly Baja Pro XS. These are some 345 70 16 that I got off of another Land Cruiser that I parted out last week. I didn't document any of that because I felt it wasn't worthy. But I did pick up a blown head gasket 96 Land Cruiser that's been chopped up flatbed. And I did went ahead and stripped that up already. It's all projects already done. Tons of parts at my place right now. But these were the wheels that were on it. So these are kind of like 345. It's basically like a 36 and a half. We just call it 37. Pretty uh, crack. Tires were made back in 2011. Uh, so they're pretty cracked. But you know what? They'll do for now. I'm going to run these tires for when I'm driving in the city and then whenever I have a off-road trip plan <coughs> I'll just go ahead and swap them out with my Baja Pro XS because I don't want to wear those guys out those guys are expensive they're gnarly they're loud and they are not the ideal wheels or they're not the ideal tires to be doing daily we just got back from Russian River which was like a two hour drive south and then you know four hours total Put about 250 miles and i'm glad i did not drove with the baja pro xs because that would have been a not so fun trip the whole noise woo, 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 like i told you guys so just want to do a quick walk around these are nice i love these wheels these are the stock land cruiser wheels they're still in really good shape the finish is still really nice it's not 100 nice but it's still really nice it's not freaking uh it's not worn out yet the uh finish nothing like that it's still really nice you know it's a typical scratch here and there but from far away it looks really nice so big came with the freaking uh these uh caps right here so these are all nice to have it just kind of give it some protection still good treads still a decent tread but like i say you can see the weather crack but like i said good enough for the city so if you guys are new 95 land cruiser aftermarket triple lock grizzly rear locker front eton locker 529s White knuckle sliders, white knuckle skip plate, old man emu, three inch lift, J series, one one point five inch coil spacer up front, and then I think I have the thirty mil coil spacers in the rear, and then I'm running, I'm still running the one inch wheel spacers on the rear, because I need those to clear my excess. I don't need it to run these tires, but it's just a hassle taking off those wheel spacers. So right now I have the wheel spacers sticking there, front has no wheel spacer. This is my new can, my gas setup. I told you guys already, this gas here carries 15 gallons compared to my 10 gallon setup that I had last time. So uh, this is a 60 inch, 60 inch, yeah. 60 inch high lift, and then spare 38. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. <laughs> Typical Land Cruiser stuff. I just got done installing these lights here. These rigid lights were on the Land Cruiser that I just parted out. I don't know which model they are, but they are the rigids. I did a little bit of research and I think they're like the Pro Series. And I think the newest one right now with like the newest similar one to mine is like 250 bucks each. So these guys are super nice. They're super bright. I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick test here in a bit. Front and rear custom bumper from the past owner. 10K winch from Smittybilt, X2O, wireless, synthetic, CB radio, no, not CB, GMRs. So this is the controller for that light that I just installed. This is just a dummy switch. This is for the E10 locker. This is for the rigids, the rigids up here. And these are for those two round ones, the Prime Lux. So let me go ahead and flip up the uh, rigids, the one that I just installed. It's really hard to see right now. Obviously it's not dark. It doesn't get dark here in Alaska right now. We're in the middle of summer. But these guys are bright. If you look at it long enough, it starts to hurt your eyes already. I like it. I was debating on putting these on the rear as backup light. Putting these nice rigid for backup lights would be like not using them to their full advantage. So I'd rather just have them up front. <coughs> More lights up in the front. So when I do those long nighttime drives, I can see any kind of moose and any kind of critters on the road because... I don't really see good at night, so I always like to have lights up front. But yeah, they're super bright. Let me go ahead and turn on the vehicle and then we'll go ahead and flip out all the lights. So, so the aux, I have uh, for my headlights, I have aux beam high and low. So we'll just go ahead and flip on the high, 
turn on the prime lux turn on the rigid and we'll turn on the pro series i'll just call them the pro series these do have the amber covers on so take it off just for the heck of it i'm going to take off the other ones too i need to fix the other side the other side is loose right now so in order to fix it i got to remove the hood and then i got to remove the uh hood cowl they call it i gotta remove this piece so that i can tighten up that bolt this is a really bad location these lights were already here when i bought it from the previous owner so i wish they would have put a better location but it's just kind of loose so that's what the rigid looks like those are nice too aux beam for these lights and the new lights led and these are the prime lux this is just a clear protective lens it's been really useful so you guys ready Close your eyes, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna burn. That's what it looks like, guys. <coughs> I wish it was nighttime so you guys can see a full effect. But that thing is bright. It is bright right now. Woo, I love it. Can't wait to see what it looks like at nighttime because I do still have to adjust the one that I just installed. I gotta adjust them, make sure they're tilting right. But for right now, it's good. I'm not gonna use them anyways for right now, but once it gets dark, Maybe next month we'll be using it. But man, that looks amazing. Super bright. You guys are probably asking, hey, why don't you just put a big old 50 inch light bar? Well, I don't really want to do that. You know, the only place I have for a light bar is if I drill into my hood, which I did pass on my pass rigs, or if I do like a light bar roof, roof mount, but I don't want to do that. And then obviously it's, there's no place for me to put like a bar on the front because this bumper is not designed for bars it's designed for like pods and stuff like that so i just use what i have i probably i'm definitely not gonna put you no more led lights up front <coughs> this is plenty if i'm gonna do any more lighting i'm gonna, I'm gonna do like rock, rock lights or get an actual um just one small led light uh maybe i'll go buy the knockoff ones like the one like these guys off amazon and i'll just put one of those over here on the back right on the spoiler or maybe i'll get like a little nice 24 inch led light bar right on the back side um the only thing about that is you know, either i have to tap into the power source or i gotta drill it and find how i want to wire that back up to the battery but that's the only thing that's really stopping me from putting any lights in the back but i would like to get a light in the back one day and have it on its own switch like so i can turn it on and off whenever i can i don't want it to be operated by the reverse switch or when i don't want to go in reverse so that's it right there i'm running dual batteries so all of my lights are connected to my second batteries. So if I do leave them on with the vehicle cut off, it will drain my second battery. It won't drain my main battery. So that's one thing that's nice. So all this lights with the power winch, the 10K winch, it's all hooked up to my second dual battery. So if I run them out, my main battery is still good. No juice or still plenty of juice. Land Cruiser is doing well. We'll probably do a couple more trips, a couple more off-road trips <coughs> this summer. Then I want to get this rig um, fully tuned up. Just go through all the suspension and have it ready for the hunting season, which is coming up in August and September. But so far, I love it. It works amazing. I think my next trial run, my next shakedown run, I might put some. I might put the one-inch wheel spacer up front when I switch back to my Baja Pro XS, because the Baja Pro XS, <coughs> when it's fully locked. It doesn't rub anymore because I cut my fenders ready. But when it's fully locked, the tire over here is rubbing on the radius arm. You can see the paint right here. But that only does it when I'm fully locked. So if I want to avoid the wheel spacers, I just need to be mindful when I'm off-roading. Don't lock your wheels too hard. Or when I do lock my wheels, don't give it full throttle. Just go gentle on it so I don't hit my radius arm or I don't rub that radius arm. But it's all good. Things that I want to do to this cruiser, <coughs> maybe this winter when we get some funds, <coughs> um, I want to do, they're expensive. They're not super expensive, but <coughs> I want to do aftermarket radius arm. I did some research and I think I'm going to go with, I am going to go with the Delta, um, the one from Delta AVS, Delta. They do a bunch of stuff for Land Cruiser. So I want to get new radius arm from Delta, which will fix the caster and will help with the flex and then the other main thing that i need or want to do for sure 
is upgrade my steering box. I want to upgrade my power steering box to the 105 Land Cruiser shaft. Basically, you got to rebuild it and then put a stronger shaft from the 105 series. So that's like a $500, $600 job right there. Uh, radius arm from Delta is about 14, so maybe 1600 bucks ship. Those are the two big main ticket items. And after that, I think I'm pretty good. I don't have to do nothing for the rear end. The rear end is pretty much good right now. If I really want to adjust the rear end, if I want to make my rear end better, I need to go and get some new aftermarket lower and upper control arm that are adjustable. But for right now, it's all good. The front and the rear pan hard, they're already adjustable. But if I want to make the rear complete, I need to get the upper and lower control, um, control arm that are adjustables. And they make the sleeve make some that you can do it yourself like DIY you chop your old ones and then sleeve it in like the pan hearts, which is what I have or I can just buy the one that's already made for it but for right now I want to prior prioritize my steering box and my radius arm I might do my steering box first because I have two spare steering box and I can send one of those in have it rebuilt upgrade it and then I'll have two extra steering box for spare. I'll leave them the way they are. They're not leaking or anything like that. I'll leave them the way they are just for backup. And then after that, we'll go ahead and move into the radius arm. But like I say, stuff like that, we're gonna wait till winter time. I don't wanna do any crazy mods. They're not crazy mods. I mean, I can get them installed in a day or so, but we're gonna wait till winter time and that'd be a winter project, winter mod. So those are the only things that I wanna do right now. Other than that, the Land Cruiser is doing great. Don't need to upgrade anything don't need to do anything to it i just did oil change about 500 miles ago so once i could once i get into my hunting season i'll go ahead and do another oil change in the next two months but for the most part it's all good it's solid and i also have been testing my gas can here my 15 gallon gas can has been great it doesn't leak or anything like that but you guys can see here i didn't leave enough room i should have left about half inch gap at least on once on this side and on this side because when this tank is fully full and it's really hot it builds pressure and there's no it's like it's it's basically it's gapping on this so i i should i didn't thought i didn't thought about that but i should have done it but that's the only thing that's flaws but it's not going to cause any problem i don't think it's going to cause any problem if i really want to change it up i can just go ahead and cut this piece off cut it about boom boom and i just need to do one i just need to do two sides to the vertical and the horizontal side but <coughs> this thing works good um it doesn't have a nozzle i'll show you guys how this works jugs you gotta have a tool you gotta have a special tool a wrench you gotta have a special tool to open it once you open it then you go ahead i can use the shaker so that's that's the siphon shaker and that's what i use to transfer the gas into my gas tank so that's something that i like i like doing that style better instead of having to remove your gas jug and then pour it into your tank when this is fully loaded with 10 gallons it does have some flex so i want to put another um, vertical support right here and then i might put some i might put some gusset support like that just like something like that maybe go all the way over here just to help prevent it from flexing when i'm driving and stuff like that on that guys that's it i'll go ahead and wrap up this video hope you guys enjoy catch you guys next time if you guys are interested in land cruiser toyota talks toyota fun stuff follow the instagram post more stuff about that stuff here on my instagram nutty new underscore four by four catch you guys on the trail bye bye